Welcome back to Comic Book News. Today we talk about Spider-Man number two, written by J.J. Abrams and his son Henry, uh, with art by Sarah Pacelli. Today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome back. Today, let's talk Spider-Man. Let's talk J.J. Abrams. Okay. I read number one, I gave a review of number one that said I hated it, then I went back and read it again, and I liked it. And I thought it had some promise. Um, I think what it really reads like is uh, a, a pitch for a, 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 a Into the Spider-Verse sort of movie or something like that. And you know, with the kind of clout that somebody like J.J. Abrams has, I wouldn't be surprised to see something like that actually get made in this day and age. So, hey man, stranger things have happened. Um, in the last issue, we saw, just to recap, uh, spy, it's in the future, Mary Jane is dead, Peter Parker has lost an arm and is no longer Spider-Man, they had a young son, Ben, who is now a teenager, who has grown up and inherited the powers of Spider-Man, and, uh, lives with Mary Jane, while Peter Parker is sort of a deadbeat dad, roaming the world, taking pictures, and uh, there's a father and son missing dynamic there, missing each other dynamic, I should say. Uh, and th uh, the son, Ben, has just discovered the powers and just been given the, sp the, the Spider-Man costume by Aunt May, who has known Peter Parker's been Spider-Man for an unspecified amount of time. So, hey, let's stop talking. Let's go in to the Million Dollar Comics game. <laughs> You know, because uh, who knows what somebody like uh, Abrams gets gets paid for this. Maybe they did get paid a million dollars to do this. Spider-Man number two. Uh, we get a nice recap page bringing us up to speed. About the villain who, you know what, we still don't know anything more about this villain, anything more about its motivations, what he's done, what he wants to do, what he's planning. Really not much at all. Um just more crappy kind of villainous dialogue and creepy drawings okay so this book is more about ben and this is where we discover ben is still has not gotten over the fact that peter parker doesn't hang out with him all the time and is is off doing things and he has to live with aunt may so he's still got resentment um meanwhile he's got his new kind of bad girl activist bad girl rather uh uh, new girl at school who uh, he's attracted to and uh, you know she's coming over after school and he's decided man she, she'll she never be able to understand something as square as Spider-Man for whatever reason so I'm going to destroy the Spider-Man costume he burns it in the in the uh, barbecue only to discover oh irony of ironies she comes in her own costume because she's like cosplay activist of some kind it's not clear yet she's a she's a we're, we're gonna find out what she is uh essentially is 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 that uh, but luckily it may is like ah uh spider-man had a spare peter had a spare costume kind of silly silly little moment uh, all just a gag to set up that moment Okay, cute. Cute enough. So, the couple... I, and I don't know what Aunt May would be thinking about this girl coming to meet her grandson for the first time in this outfit. I don't know. Maybe she's cool with it. She, I guess she's seen crazier outfits. Huh? 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 Am I right? Yeah. Anyway, we learn that what she does is she graffitis things that she doesn't like. Right? So, like... uh if uh, somebody's being a, a, a sexist, uh, then you go to their place of business and you graffiti it. Okay, fantastic. So Spider-Man's along for the ride and along for the crime, helping her out. Uh, when the, the police come to stop her and they decide to run and flee the police, okay? Great power, great responsibility, folks. So, but she's like, oh, they're cornered by the cops. But he's like, wait, I got a way out. The whip. And busts out his web shooters for the first time, mind you. There was no scene of like learning how to use these things or even learning what a web shooter was. All we saw so far was the costume. He never is he wearing a web shooter? 
I'm assuming he is. How did he know what was going to... What did he... Okay. Obviously, we wanted this moment. But I think there was probably another way to get to this moment that wasn't quite as clumsy as that. That was just kind of clumsy, amateurish writing to get us here. Anyway, uh-oh. They're slamming into buildings. Luckily, he's got superpowers, so it didn't hurt him. But oh, she must be dead, right? Oh, wait. Nah, she's all right. In fact, she's totally stoked. Okay. Meanwhile, you know, Peter Parker uh, oversees, but watching the news, sees that his son has picked up his mantle, I guess. And so they're back. Meanwhile, the villain, we're linking him to Oscorp. But not really doing much more, right? So now suddenly Spider-Man's a hero. There's a there's a breaking news. There's an explosion at Oscorp. So he does what he does, and he does his Spider-Man thing. Meanwhile, some unbelievably corny, uh, crappy dialogue. Like this guy who he's pulling out of the rubble, like almost dead a second ago, and they're like trading these kind of jokes that are just utterly unbelievable and not funny and terribly written. There's no other way to describe it. Meanwhile, here come these hordes of these crazy creatures. Mind you, these are the creatures that ended Spider-Man's career, that ripped his arm off, that killed Mary Jane. This is this guy's first time ever fighting, and he's like, gonna handle these things? Somehow he managed to, to escape, and this guy gets away. I mean with more just of the crappiest dumbest jokey dial I don't even want to read it it's just crap and we end with oh Peter Parker coming home saying hey there Spider-Man so now we're going to get a moment some kind of moment of reconciliation I guess maybe in the next issue maybe we'll move the mo motivations of the villain and the story forward a little bit more but I'm not sure uh, that I'm going to be sticking around this was bad in a way that I, I don't I don't know that I need to read the next issue. It was that bad. The first issue had its um had its faults, but it was readable and and sucked me in a little bit and made me want to know what's coming next. This one, all that attempted comedy stuff that fell dead took me right out of the story. There was some you know, this is pretty high stakes stuff. This is life and death. This is these are the the the, the cadaverous the, the villain, who we still don't know why he got his name, what he's doing, what his powers are. We know nothing, essentially, except he's got dead, he's got a dead body and something to do with cadavers. Um, I'm not thrilled with this. I've had a week where I started on a high note with X-Men and everything went downhill from Superman to Batman and now to Spider-Man. Well, well, at least we got X-Men, right? And, uh, you know, at least I've got you guys so thank you for watching these videos thanks for liking and subscribing and supporting all the things that we do on this channel we recently passed the 400 subscriber barrier we're on our way to 500 uh our, our big goal is to get to a thousand when we get to a thousand we're allowed to monetize and we can increase the budget finally upgrade to the trillion dollar comic scam that we've been talking about so thank you subscribe comment uh, do those things, spread the word about this channel and, and spread the links, but just most of all, Hey, thanks for watching. See you next time.